Welcome to another one of my videos, and this one is going to be a little bit theoretical. Um, how does electricity work in generating it, and uh, what are you going to use? Like, where do you get motors from, and the generators that you're going to generate the electricity from? Electricity is basically just getting electrons to move through a circuit. Now, if we have a magnet like this, it, a magnet has a north and a south pole, and it generates a magnetic field around it, those, of that north and south. If we were to get a coil and put it inside the magnetic uh, um, field of magnetism there, and if we were to move it, slicing through the field, it makes electrons move and along the wire and that's what's going to generate your electricity. That means if you take a coil like this and get a magnet and go like that, it's actually generating minute amounts of electricity in that coil and in the wire. So let's test this using a voltmeter here. I've got it on um, millivolts here, 200 millivolts I think it is uh, scale. I've got the um, the coil linked up just by wires, just believe me, they're, co they're connected and nothing strange about that. Now if I get my, uh, this little magnet, it's a very weak magnet, so it's not going to give me hardly anything. It's just registering that something's happening, the negative thing, oh you can't see it in the video. So I'll change it for a better magnet, stronger one, and you can see that it's giving me, just by moving that over there, gives me something. But if I was to put a, this, me, it's just a piece of metal iron core through there, it's going to give me a much better reading, you see? Four, five, somewhere around there, milliamps. But you get the theory, you see, if you just get a magnet, move it around a, a coil, it will generate a voltage. Now there are lots of different designs of motors and generators, but here is essentially is what one looks like. There are a couple of magnets, those curvy looking things there, and the coil there spins within the magnetic fields of those two magnets and generates electricity, and through some brushes here, like on there, it picks up the electricity and feeds it off with those wires. That's the basic essentials. Now sometimes those uh, magnets are electromagnets, which are wire with electricity passing through, but we'll take a look at that later. So, with a fixed magnet motor or uh, generator, we're going to have like a magnet like this and another magnet like this, sometimes some more, and in the middle we're going to have these, this is a cross section, you're going to have the windings of this motor and as it spins like that, it will cut the magnetic field and then we can draw off electricity. Right? The reverse is the same. If I was to feed a current into that, it would then uh, make that spin and that's a motor. So motors that have fixed uh, magnets, we can either, if it generates, I mean, you can turn it and it will generate electricity out or you can feed electricity in and it will act as a motor, so that's what we're going to use. Now, a motor that does not have fixed magnets, you can have your rotor, I think it is, with its um, coils on it that are going to have brushes to take electricity on and off, on or off. And instead of the, uh, the magnets, we're going to have some coils of wire so that if you were to put an electrical current into that, it would generate a magnetic field around it. Sometimes you can take, in some designs, you can take the electricity off this um, rotor that's producing the electricity and feed it into the coil to produce that. Now, the difficulty is that where this has to have electricity to generate a magnetic field in order for this to be able to generate electricity, so it's a feedback system. Sometimes in the smaller motors, there's enough residual magnetism in that coil so that when you spin this, it will generate small amounts, then feed it back into the coil, and then create greater amounts until you get the full amount. 
Now, in bigger ones like car alternators and bigger ones, you may have to supply uh, some electricity from outside of the system to be able to get it to really to, to start, or else that just spins and does nothing because there's no magnetic field generated. Now, the design, whether it is a magnet, a fixed magnet, or a coil um, setup, an, an electromagnet setup, depending on the strength of that magnetic field and the number of windings you have, will give you different voltages and different uh, of different outputs. So you have, if you have less windings here or a weaker magnetic field, you're going to get less voltage. And it will get to a point where that magnetic field, you spin it fast enough, it will generate a, a, a current up to a certain voltage and then that magnetic field will get saturated and will go no further. So something like a car alternator will get to about 45 volts and no matter how fast you spin it, it won't go any faster. So the design of it will dictate how much you're going to get and how useful your motor is going to be. So there are quite a number of motors that are going to work to generate uh, electricity but it just depends on the design of the motor as to how efficient it is, how much electricity you're going to get out of it and how much not. Because depending on the design is how much electricity you can get out. Now where can we get them from? Well, I'm going to be experimenting a lot with things like bits of old electronics like this here, um, old radios. You'll be able to find, for example, here is a motor. I'll use that one um, here. And uh, another radio piece is one here that is activating the tuner. And this is an old CD one. There's about four motors in that one. One for opening the doors, one for making these go in and out. I'm going to rescue them from there anyways. So we're going to get motors sort of like this sort of thing here. Uh, we might get flatter ones like this one. We might get uh, slightly smaller ones like this. And we'll just experiment and see what each one is going to give me. Good enough for experimenting with anyway.